uh, were continuing in this speech that the Lubavitch Rebbe made. And actually, it comes from two speeches, but it was consolidated into one uh, mimer. Here it is. That's right. It's a mimer that was from the Sicha of uh, the, the, a speech that the Rebbe made in Parshas Noach in 1987, and a little bit from Parsha Pinchas that the Rebbe made in 1991. And from other places also, but those are the main ones. Good. Good to know the source of things. Okay. All right. So what have we learned up to now? We have learned up to now that <clears throat> it's the, 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 there's a sentence in the prophets that say that I will make for you a small temple. Mikdash me'at. I'm going to make for you a small temple, a mikdash me'at. And that I'm going to, God said, I'm going to be with you in this little temple everywhere in exile. It's in Ezekiel, prophet Ezekiel. And it explains in the Gomorrah that everywhere that the Jewish people were exiled, after the first temple was destroyed, after the second temple was destroyed, that every synagogue and every place of learning, genuine synagogue, genuine place of learning, that is called a little temple. But the Talmud explains that there's always one main mikdash me'at. There's one main little temple, miniature, holy temple. And that's called Beit Rabbeinu Shababavil. It's just given the name of the house of our teacher in exile. And the Rebbe brings a lot of proofs and finally concludes that this is the headquarters of Chabad in, it has to be somewhere, headquarters of Chabad in New York, Brooklyn, especially because there are no, there's no competition. I mean, there's nobody else that's really trying to awake all the Jews, trying to spread Torah to Jews that don't even want to learn Torah and encourage the following of commandments, even the Jews that are don't even know they're Jews. The hundreds, thousands of emissaries have been sent around the world. Billions and billions of dollars have been spent at great cost, at great <clears throat> danger, personal discomfort in order just to wake up the Jews. And it all came from this building, 770. That's where the Rebbe is, and that's where the Mashiach is. <clears throat> so the Rebbe, let's continue. The Yeshla will see if we can add on, <clears throat> just a little bit to drive it home. And we're on the Zion. Got this nice picture over here. Oh, there it is. 770 Eastern Parkway. Even though the bottom is sort of cut off. 770 Eastern Parkway. This was the room where the Rebbe's headquarters were. The Rebbe's personal room. <clears throat> All right, there's a lot of other pictures you can find also, but this <clears throat> seemingly innocuous building is really the source of light for the whole entire exile, the Jewish people in exile. And here it is, this is the house of the Mashiach. And we're going to see, and the Rebbe, in fact, wrote, in the end, he wrote, 770 is the numerical value of Beit Mashiach, the house of the Messiah. We can add on that this is also <clears throat> hinted at, and the name of Beit Rabbeinu, the name that's called the house of our teacher in exile. Rabbeinu, the house of our teacher. Rabbeinu, which is the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Rebbe always stressed that the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, he, didn't, he said it clearly, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe is the Mashiach. 
He is the Mashiach of our generation. And I am just like an extension. The Rebbe said about himself, I'm just an extension of the Mashiach. I'm basically the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. And the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe's name, and the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, in addition to the fact that he was in a long chain of Rebbe's that were totally self-sacrificing for Jews, but that was they were in Russia. He fought against the communists. And no one could fight against the communists. He fought against the communists, and he defeated the communists. He defeated the communists. Which the communists was a power that nobody could possibly defeat, and he defeated which that might be a little bit of a lesson for Putin and these other guys <clears throat> that, I mean, I don't think that they're anti-Semites, but they ends up indirectly, they are definitely messing with the Jews. So <clears throat> one person, this one man, defeated all of communism. Huh? Can you believe it? It happened like 70 years or something after he fought his battle. But he put, put the first crack in the Iron Curtain, and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger until just suddenly it just fell, you know, 1990, whatever it is, the whole thing just fell down, and it was all in the merit of this person. So, <clears throat> says the Rebbe, he is the Mashiach. Now, it says in a lot of places the Mashiach can come from the dead, and the Mashiach just look like he's dead, he's not really dead. In any case, those questions you can ask later, but the fact is the Rebbe knows what he's talking about. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, he is the Mashiach of the generation, and you can see in his name, Rabbeinu, Yosef Yitzchak. His name was Yosef. This comes from the prophecy. By Yomahu, Yosef Hashem Shenit Yado. He will raise his hand again to gather his people from all of the nations, from Egypt, etc. The city, the the the, the islands, the, the, the cast off islands, and all of the Asaf, and he will gather Asaf, all the uh, they say dispersed Jews, Nidche Yisrael, the dispersed Jews, the rejected Jews, and the, those who are the, the scattered ones of Yehuda. And he will again, they say, bring them all together from the four corners of the earth. Pretty good. Who says this? What is it? It's Isaiah. Look over in there, and Isaiah is very positive <clears throat> things about Isaiah. As we said a lot of times, um, you know, Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah, these prophets, they really came down hard on the Jewish people. And the Jewish people were really deserving of it. The Jewish people really did a lot of bad things. And the, the, the prophets kept telling them. And the prophets gave them these dire warnings. And the Torah gives them dire warnings. You know, the, the, the prophets. The prophets just so, said that the, the threats and, in the Torah are still applicable. The threats that God made in the Torah, <clears throat> which were like, you know, uh, the, the, the 800 years before, they're still applicable. But the Jewish people didn't listen, and the first temple was destroyed. But all of these prophets that prophesied doom and punishment and this, they all of them said, listen, don't get me wrong. Every one of them, don't get me wrong. God loves the Jewish people unconditionally. Jewish, and that's what makes it so bad. God can't leave you. He's not going to leave you. So, if, you know, if, if God would leave you, so you can do sense, do whatever you want to. You know, what do, what do we care? We'll go to hell. We'll do it. Who says there's heaven and hell? God left us, but it's not so. God will never, ever leave the Jewish people, ever. Despite all of the harsh things that are mentioned there. The promise is just as relevant today as it was when God gave the Torah and said he's going to gather all the Jews together. Despite whatever the Jews do. <clears throat> it's like a father disowning his son. You know, the, I mean, there are fathers do disown the Jews, but God will never disown the Jewish people. But if a father doesn't disown his son, it means he's always attached to his son. His son is a big criminal. His son is a big who knows what. And it says, oh, you're, uh, what's his name? You're... El Cap you're El Capone's father, eh, Mr. Capone. Yeah, I mean, you must be a pretty bad guy. The same thing with the Jews. God can never, he can never leave. When the Jews do bad things, it gives God a bad name. But what can he do? He can't divorce us. And not only that, it says that God is going to send someone just like Moses, and he's going to inspire all the Jews. And then God is going to asaf, he's going to gather all the Jews from the four corners of the earth. That's what Isaiah said. That's the first name of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Yosef. 
hinting that God is going to gather the Jews together. The second name of, of, of the previous Rebbe is Yitzchak. Tzchok <laughs> v'asimcha, the joy and the happiness she Bagula that will be in the final redemption and the gathering of the Jewish people by means of the Mashiach. Like it says, Azim leschok pino, like King David said in Psalms, then, and King David, he was the first Mashiach. He will bring joy. Then there will be joy to everybody. As then, la'atid love in the future, kashomer Yitzchak, Yitzchak, you are our father. That's Beit Rabbeinu the, the, the This thing of Beit Rabbeinu is the number 770. Huh? 770. The address of this Beit Rabbeinu, this little temple outside of Israel, the address is 770. And the Rebbe, like I said, he wouldn't let a footnote that that's called Beit Mashiach. It's the same gematria. Take the letters Beit Mashiach. I shall look over there. This number is what's called Beit Rabbeinu because it's 770. 770, this shows. Um, is the same gematria as paratsta. Paratsta means spreading out. Uferatsta. God promised Yaakov that he would, he would spread out all over the world. He would fulfill the promise that God gave to Abraham when he changed his name, that you would be the father of all mankind. Paratsta. And like paratsta, yom of a of a of a This hints at that this house, this 770, this little tabernacle, this little temple, which is Beit Rabbeinu Shabbat in exile, that from this there's going to be light going out to the whole world, to the four directions of the world. In a way, it will be Peritza Derech. It'll break through. Shakal Adalad Rucho, that the whole, all of the four directions of the world will elevate to be the holy land. Eretz Israel, like it says, Atiri Eretz Israel, like it says in the future, the land of Israel is going to spread out and all of the world. Oh, we said that before from the Midrash. Kalel, this includes especially that all of the synagogues and all the places of learning, Ubakalolam in the whole world, Nikfaim will be gathered to the land of Israel. Umitchabrim, the Beit and they'll be joined to the Holy Temple. And I would imagine this refers to even whole uh, synagogues that were that were knocked down, destroyed. I mean, all these things that Hitler destroyed. They'll also fly. And the complete total redemption by means of the Mashiach, that's what it says. Like um, uh, the Peretz Yisrael. Um, uh, uh, Tamar said when she gave birth to Peretz, one of her twin sons, Peretz Vazerach. So Peretz eventually he became the progenitor, uh, that's the right word, progenitor, of uh, King David. From the parents, the whole story of Yehuda of Tamar and over there. <clears throat> but the Vadoshu result, the rabbis say that this is the Mashiach, because the Mashiach says, Alu Haporitz Livneim, Livneim. says the Mashiach is called the breaker, the one who breaks through. We can attach these two things with the whole idea of number 770. What is 770? This can be attached, connected to Yosef Hashem Sheni, what he says that God will increase again, raising his hand, and he will gather. Yosef also means Asaf. How is that connected to 770 that God is going to gather all the Jews together? It says, excuse me one second. The number 770, this indicates on the completion of the number seven. Now, the number seven is a, is a, is a, a very important number in Judaism. You see, according to Judaism, God creates the world, right? He created the world. He created the world from nothing. So how long does it take to make something from nothing? It doesn't take any time. God created time. So God could have created the whole world in one instant. But he didn't. He created the world in a strange pattern, which is called seven days. And the number seven is a very important number. In Judaism, it has very spiritual, mystical, godly 
uh, implications. The number of seven. So 770 in some ways is a completion of seven, the number seven. Seven, this is seven, as each one of the seven is contained 10. <clears throat> now 10 is a whole number. 10 is a what's called a complete number. So to speak, you start over from the beginning. You just put a zero after it, and then you start again. Two with three, four, five, so with a zero after it. And then you put two zeros after it, and etc. So 10 is a complete number. Also, 10 is the number of the spherot, the aspects of godliness. So seven times 10, and there's a complete seven, a whole seven is 70. <clears throat> and even more, if we want to say that each one is, each 10 is also contained of 10, so that's 700. That's 10 times 10. So that's 700. So if you put both of them together, you have 700. That's like a double completion. And 70, which is one completion, 770. Okay, what does this mean? The number seven is attached to the world. <clears throat> the world was created in seven days. The seven days, it's called the Shiva Shemya Binyan. And also this corresponds to the seven emotions of God. That's the principle by which God creates the world. Uh, you give me these things, Paul, and I want to look at them, and I forget. I get involved in other things. I'll try to do it today. God willing. I'm sorry I didn't. Okay. <clears throat> this also corresponds to the seven uh, branches of the menorah, of the candelabra that was in the te temple and the tabernacle. Number seven. According to this, the completion of the number seven, namely seven hundred and seven ten seven seventy, this indicates <clears throat> on the completion of the service of the Jewish people in refining the world by means of our deeds and our service all the time of exile. Sha'az then, Nigalim, we will be redeemed from the exile, and we will turn return to the land of Israel, seven is the world. Seventy is the completion of the world. Seven hundred is even a bigger completion of the world. This indicates that's the job of the Jewish people is to illuminate the world with the seven branches of the menorah and the seven emotions of God. And that shows on a level of completion. <clears throat> or in the language of the Torah, that is hinted, we can about the connection of the first name of the previous Rebbe to the redemption by Yomahu on that day, Yosef Hashem Shenit, God will continue the second time to lift up his hand. That was like he did in Egypt. I'll do it again. We can note that Sharamot can <clears throat> to take possession of the remainder of his people. I show you Shara that remain in uh, Ashur and in Egypt. Ashur means all the lands of prosperity and the lands of difficulty for the Jews. <clears throat> from Patrus and from Kush, Umalim, Beshinar, Umachamas. This is a sentence which says <clears throat> that the Jewish people will be redeemed from all the corners of the world. They read Gualatam shall call Ben Israel Mishiva the Arzot from the seven nations. Ah, uh, seven. Here we go. That, that is from Ashur one, two, it's from three, four, five, six, seven. And there's another one. Again. I'm sorry, do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There it is. Seven, etc. This is the redemption of the Jewish people from the seven lands. And that's what it continues also. And from the islands of the sea, the islands of the sea, says the Rebbe, this refers to America. America, South America, North America. <clears throat> that This is called the islands which are in the sea. In other words, the main place was Israel. That's where the Torah was given. And, and uh, the other places, they were settled afterwards. <clears throat> That's what's called the islands in the sea. 
In any case, God will gather the Jews from them also. <clears throat> the, the, the elevation of the lowest places possible. <clears throat> And so, therefore, there will also be elevated automatically all the other lands that the Jewish Jews are scattered. This is all the seven lands of the world. So we can, right, the Jews were exiled into Egypt and to Babylon. All these were in the upper part of the, the globe where the Torah, where the, in the area of Israel. So not only that, God will also gather the Jews, not just from those lands where they were, Jews were scattered immediately after the destruction of the first and second temples, but also to the places where Jews went a long time afterwards, into America, Canada. How long have Jews been living in these places? Right? How long has anybody been living in these places except for the, the Indians and the <clears throat> in these places, right? 200 years, 300 years. Well, Bishlam is the Mispar Sheva. This is the completion of the number seven, 770. This is also the, and the hinted at the work that the previous Rebbe did in his life. He lived 70 years. 70 years he lived from 19, until 1950, and he was born in what, 19, uh, at 18, sorry, 70, huh? right, works on 1880. He was born in 1880, passed away in 1950. In other words, 70 years. <clears throat> The previous rabbi lived until he finished <clears throat> all of his work that he did. The last 10 years was in America, this place where you know, they had only been, so to speak, recently settled. The last, wow, how long? When did Columbus get there? When did people start going there? But <clears throat> only in the last few hundred years. Kolel Gam Hemshech Avodas Hashem Machron, especially the work which has been carried on by what's called the seventh generation. The Rebbe is now speaking about himself. All the number sevens are dear. The Rebbe is the seventh Rebbe from the first Rebbe of Chabad. That by means of this, there's made a completion of all of our service in the whole entire time of the exile, in all of the seven nations of the world, and also in all the islands, the Rebbe said, referring to America and Canada and South, and South Africa, South America. Immediately, it says, Yosef Hashem Sheni is that God will again lift up his hand and gather all the scattered people of Israel. And that's when it's going to be paratzta, by means of what? Paratzta, godliness will be spread out all over the world. And paratzta is the gematria is the, is the of 770. <clears throat> all of this, Nitfosef has added a special uh, stress. We can get a special, let me say, importance and lately. Lately, now. This service of spreading out Judaism and spreading out the Hasidut from 770 Beit Rabbeinu, this continues and increases constantly. More powerful than it was even in the time when the previous Rebbe was alive. The 10 last years that the Rebbe was in this world, I mean, you have to understand that the previous Rebbe, when he came to America, it was unheard of spreading out Judaism, unheard of. The Jews were just happy to live in, in places where nobody bothered them. The previous Rebbe said, no, we have to go out and we have to spread Judaism. It was unheard of. He, had, he made a lot of enemies by the... Because he said he's destroying Judaism, you're gonna you're gonna uh, destroy our children. And it says the Rebbe in the last ten years of his life <clears throat> really increased the spreading out of Judaism. He, he innovated it and he increased it very much more. And and after the the Rebbe passed over, he passed away. The Rebbe passed away as in the last 40 years. Now, the Rebbe is speaking in, in, in 1990. In the last 40 years, it's increased even more in a way that God has given us a, a heart to know and eyes to see and ears to hear. It says that after the Jewish people wandered in the desert for 40 years, so Moses said to the Jewish people, 
After 40 years, now you can appreciate me. It takes 40 years for people to really appreciate their teacher. So the Rebbe said, now we can really start to appreciate the previous Rebbe. This was in 1990, 40 years after the previous Rebbe passed away. So now we can really start to appreciate the fact that now we are in, in Beit Rabbeinu, we're in the house of the house of the Mashiach, Beit Rabbeinu, 770. This is the level of Talpiot. This is the, the high place that all mouths face, pray to. We've been here for, the, the previous Rebbe moved there in 1940. He began it. And the Rebbe is saying, now we're in 1990. This is 50 years we've been in this place, this small temple outside of Jerusalem. And this is stressed even more when we see clearly how that is added on the number of Jewish people that come to 770. Rovam Adrit Melech. In 1990, already there were, there were hundreds of people that were all coming. It was already packed. The place was packed in the beginning when the previous Rebbe, it was, it, it was difficult for him to get a minion. The previous Rebbe. And now all of a sudden it became, the 770 became popular. I remember when the French people came, the Rebbe used the word, the, this French national anthem, and he put to it words, one of the parts of our prayer, and he said, this will break the the barriers of France. The next year, the place was packed with French Bali Chuva, right? People that they didn't even know how to pray. They didn't know how to dress. They didn't, right? And it, all of a sudden, it, it was a, a tremendous awakening by the French, and then after by the, the Russians, etc. cetera. In 770, the place is packed. And now it's even more packed than before. Naset Tzorich V'achrach we have to, therefore, we have to even make this place, 770 had to be made bigger. They had to increase under, the, the underneath, make this huge. When I got there, it was in 1971. It was about one third, a quarter, as big as it is now, underneath. That is bigger than way of Ufratster, being in, like in the Holy Temple. And according to what we said before, the greatness of Beit Rabbeinu Shabbat Bavel, that said that the Holy Temple moved from Jerusalem, and it settled down wherever the Jews are. So this is a place that we said that the Holy Temple is going to come here first. That there is one, the Holy, the third temple is going to come to Brooklyn first, right, for who knows, a, a fraction of a second, doesn't make any difference, and it'll take 770, and they'll all fly to Israel. Is this possible? Yes, that's what's going to be. Until Shabbat Yitkalem, Mikdash Atit, the future third temple is going to be revealed there. And from there, Yaksar, all of them will fly to Jerusalem. So it's understood the great merit that any Jew has, if he can participate in any way he can with donations, whatever, to build the, the Beit Rabbeinu Shabbat Bavel. Of course, that was accomplished. Ka'achana, the Yerida the, the, the this is a preparation for the revelation of the third temple. And now is the special time. Now, says the Rebbe, we are on my 90th year. The Rebbe was 90 years old. As was stressed in the, stressed in the Mizmur Tzaddik. In the beginning. Hey, me, Hashem, me onata, you are a, a, how do you say, a, 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 a castle, you are. For us, for every generation, you are our, how do you say, our, Stronghold. This refers to all the synagogues and all the places of learning in the world. And it finishes that the, the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Rebbe was going, was was 89. And this was going into his, and the, they, were, they were reading the, the chapter in the Psalms. We read the chapter in the Psalms according to our age. So it, we read the year we're going into. So the Rebbe was, so to speak, going into, he's finished 89, he was going to the 90th year. So he says, now we're reading Psalm 90. He has this Noam Hashem Aleinu, Aleinu, that the, 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 the pleasantness of God should be on us and our hands should be, handiwork should be firm. So this refers to, this was said when Moses set up the tabernacle, that God's presence was there. So he said this sentence. And King David just repeated it last. May it be God's will that before, even before 
the 770, the building is increased, they should be revealed, and it should come from heaven. The third temple, Miktash Hashem Konan Yodecha, the third temple that has all three aspects in it, all three aspects of the Jewish people, the Kohanim, the Levim, and the Israelim. And it'll also include in it the three temples, the Mishkan, the first temple, and the second temple. That it should be revealed, first of all, in Beit Rabbeinu Shabbat like here. And this will be also a triple place. What's triple? It'll be a place of prayer, a place of learning Torah, and a place of good deeds. From there, we'll all jump somehow or other to Jerusalem, together with all of the synagogues and all the places of learning in the entire world. They'll all be set in Israel, in Jerusalem. Mechuber, and they'll be joined on to the Holy Temple, together with all the Jewish people from all the ends of the world. Like it says, I will bring them to my holy mountain and will make them happy, etc. Because Beiti, my house, is a place of prayer for all mankind. It says that will be, will be firm and, and, and firmly based and eternal. The mountain of the house of God on the top of the mountains and the top of the hills will all raise out and call to all the non-Jews, to all the nations. And all of many nations, and many nations will come and they will say to us, let us go to the house of God, the house of Jacob, and we will sing. <clears> the <throat> Yoronu from the ways of God, and we will walk in the paths of God, because Mitzion te Torah, because from Zion, from Zion, from Israel, will come out Torah and the Devar and the Word of God from Jerusalem. That's what it means. There'll be a new Torah will come out from me. What does it mean? A new Torah will feel the godliness in every word of the Torah and every commandment we do. No one will think that the Torah can be interpreted however we want. The Torah is holy. It'll be brand new. We'll see the holiness of the rabbis, the holiness of the Torah immediately. Mamish. Now. Now let's learn the... the now tomorrow, we, we, we're going to have a class today at um, 3 o'clock. We're going to learn the half Torah of this King Solomon building the temple. This is what we're going to learn at 3 o'clock. And tomorrow there will be a class. We'll learn one of the sikhs of the Rebbe in Yiddish. <clears throat> uh, at 8.15 tomorrow morning. Eh, what day is today? Today is Thursday. That's right, tomorrow morning, Friday. My father said, this is talking about the, the previous Rebbe made these statements and the Rebbe just gathered all together. A chassid creates the environment. <clears throat> that is when it, a chassid comes to a place where there's no Judaism, no morals, no this, is we have to change it. You come into a room where everybody is negative, you have to change this issue. You create the environment. You make the world good. The world doesn't make you bad. If a chassid doesn't do that, then he has to check his own baggage. He has to check his own personality to see if really he's okay. Because when he sits in with his friends, he's all right. As soon as he gets to a place that's a little bit challenging, then he's not all right anymore. Either they can affect him somehow negatively. The very fact that a chassid doesn't change the place where he's in to make it more positive. If you don't change the place you're in, you should be broken like a, like a, what is it, like a, a splinter. You should demand, what am I doing in this world? I'm here to make the world better, not just to complain about how bad things are. Have a good day with Mashiach now. See you at three o'clock.